Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Finally getting a chance to use one of the new uh, 3D embossing folders that Simon Says Stamp released. This one sold out really quickly, so I've been holding off, but I got the email notification that it was restocked. So I was like, yay, I'm gonna make a video. So I went over these in the, was it the Holly Jolly release? I'm so behind. Anyway, I kind of showed how I use these, but I'm gonna do this again. So I, most of my die cutting, I'm always using my Spellbinders Platinum machine. It's the same as a Platinum 6 machine. Um, the Platinum is just the big one. And with 3D, these 3D embossing folders, what works perfect for me is I have the platform, I have the embossing folder, and I use two metal shims. Now, if you don't have metal shims or you only have one metal shim, because most people, if you have any, you're only going to have one. Like, why would you need two? I don't even know how I ended up with two. But anywho, um, a couple pieces of really heavyweight cardstock work great as well. I've seen other designers do that. And then the other thing I really like to do is I lightly spray my cardstock before I run it through. So I laid out just my big flower sack cloth just so I'm not getting like water sprayed everywhere. And I just lightly mist the cardstock. I stick it inside the folder and it doesn't matter if you have those metal shims on top or on the bottom. If you have them on top of the folder though, there's gonna be a chance that over time you're gonna really warp them. It doesn't ruin them, but it just gets annoying. So I just put them on the bottom and then my folder with the cardstock in it and I run it back and forth through the machine and it dry embosses whatever pattern you're using. Today I'm using this forest border one, which is fabulous. So exact same process. And for this, of course, I'm using Nina Desert Storm cardstock because I'm just obsessed with it this season. I can't stop using it. But the, misting the cardstock works with any cardstock and especially if you are having cardstocks crack I highly recommend just a light mist. They looked really splotchy there when I pulled it out because the pressure of the embossing holder and the machine um, really pressed that water into it, but it'll dry and those splotches will go away. So the other thing I wanted to do was add ink. There's many different ways to add ink to your 3D embossing holders. You go on the flat, the side that has more of a flat um, surface with the image like indented into it. And I fiddled a little bit with applying ink directly with the ink pad. Didn't like it. I like to use my um, ink blending tools. I'm using my oxide inks, so I have my ink blending tools. And that wasn't really going to work because since you're pouncing the ink with the ink blending tool, it's pressing the ink into the like recessed areas. So honestly, one of the best ways to apply ink to the embossing folder is to use a brayer, which I actually, I've, I've kept these all these years. <laughs> I have not pulled out a brayer in literally forever. This is a speedball brayer. These ones are a little pricier, but honestly, they'll last forever. I will link to this same brand of one, but I'll also link to a cheaper option. I can't speak about the other ones because I this is literally the only one I've got um, in this size anyway. And yeah, all I did was smush my ink pads, my oxiding pads onto one of my tonic craft sheets. Um, if I had space to pull out my like Tim Holtz glass media mat, that would work really well too. Cause just the way the ink sits on the glass. And then I just ran my brayer through it. So it picked up all that ink and I brayered that ink, like rolled it onto the flat, flatter side of the embossing folder. And then that cardstock I had misted very, very lightly on the one side and then um, ran that through. And it just presses the ink onto all the flat areas and then all of the actual embossing. So in this case, the trees remain the same color as the cardstock. So because I'm using Desert Storm, it's not as intense of a difference. If you're using white cardstock or um, Rangers white watercolor paper would work really well for this too. You get obviously a bigger like difference between the colors, but you guys know I love my Desert Storm. So... This works, I'm able to get two like pretty much perfect impressions with um, just one smushing of the ink pads, I'm so technical, and using that brayer. I only added a little bit more of that speckled egg. Um, I'll have links to everything as always, but I use speckled egg, chip sapphire, and rustic wilderness um, oxide inks. On this second one, I misted the cardstock on both sides just to see, and of course, because oxide inks are reactive with water, it created a more of a slightly splotchy effect in a way. Um, which is cool, but it, it's not going to matter because I'm going to splatter just the daylights out of this because 
Because again, I'm obsessed with Nina Desert Storm cardstock. Splatter all the things. Bling. Glitter. You guys know the drill. If you've watched my videos, even for just the last month, you guys know what I'm obsessed with. So I started with Shimmer Splatter first. This is just Ranger Perfect Pearl Powder that I keep in a little mini mister bottle with some distilled water. I have no formula for how much. I just scoop a little bit out of the container, throw it in the mister bottle, add the water, and that's it. And then I just got to shake it up. And then um, I, my preferred way to use it is like this. Like I either dip my paintbrush into the bottle and splatter it, or I've been picking up the color or picking up the um, shimmer splatter and putting it just on my craft mat or just a non-porous surface to pick up so I can pick up faster without knocking that little bottle over. Um, but it also works to just take a little bit of that powder, put it on a non-porous surface, swirl it with a bit of water, and you got a pretty shimmer splatter. Love. So I'll link to, again, all of it. And then of course, white splatter. Must, must have the white splatter, especially on these. Cause I was like, you know, the scene and the snow falling and all that. So I heavily, like even with my splat box, which you can see has, has contained a lot of splatter. I have white splatter everywhere. I got it all over me. <laughs> I just, I couldn't stop. It was fun. So same thing, uh, picket fence, distress paint. Um, I thinned it out a teeny bit with water. You don't really need to thin out these paints like much at all. They're very, they have a very liquid consistency, which I really like because splatter, they're perfect for it. Whereas a lot of other acrylic paints, if you water them down, they start, um, you lose that vibrancy. So that's why I like and recommend the distress paints, especially for splatter. Um, because yeah, they're just, they're already that really thin consistency and yet very pigmented for what they are. But also always make sure you wash off your brushes, regardless of what paint, whether it's distress paint or anything, but acrylic paints, wash your brushes, your tools, etc. immediately afterwards. Don't let that paint dry in them. It will wreck them. And distress paint is completely permanent when it's dry. So I did all my splatter, lots of it. <laughs> Everything is completely dry. So I'm trimming down all of these backgrounds. They were originally just A2 size pieces before I ran them through the embossing folder. So now I'm just trimming them down to about four, four by five and a quarter. And then for my main sentiment, I'm using this great big, um, large written Merry Christmas wafer die. This one does have the outline as well, but I am using just the word for all of these. And I die cut two layers from heavyweight white cardstock. And then the top layer from, this is like, I think Concord 9th Evergreen. Normally I would just do all the same color, but I don't have very much of this Evergreen cardstock. So to conserve that, I just did white underneath and then the top layer is just that green. And then I stacked them together because I like having my word sentiments stacked. It just gives it that depth and dimension that I love. So I did this four times cause I was like, if I'm going to sit down and make these cards, you know, I like making multiples. Plus it just gives me a chance to experiment in that, which is what I did again here. I could have done this before the die cuts, everything, but it, it was just in the back of my mind the entire time. And then I just had to try it. So I just have some white pigment ink. Um, Hero Arts Unicorn White is amazing. Simon Says Tam's White Pigment Ink works amazing. I just recently got, this is the Ink on 3 Shark Tooth White. And there's two other colors. I've used the Ink on 3 inks in a few videos so far and I love them. They're, they're very unique, but that's not what this video is about. So anywho, white pigment ink with a blender foam, very, very lightly. Like I'm not pressing, I'm not like smushing the blender foam. I'm very lightly rubbing it just onto those raised embossed trees. And I'm, I'm not applying a lot. It's a very subtle thing, but I just, I really wanted those trees to stand out a tiny bit more because these ones are obviously much more simple. And I thought it would look nice. And it really does, especially in real life. It's one of those things where the camera's just not doing it justice as usual. But I very lightly applied this. I could have done this before the splatter, but again, it was just kind of one of those things that I was like, hmm, I wonder if this will work. <laughs> and then I was happy with it. So I ended up doing it to actually all of the pieces. So the ones with the color um, backgrounds, I didn't apply very much of the white pigment ink at all because if I wanted the trees to be white, I would have just done this on white cardstock. Like I like the look of the desert storm, but I added just a little bit. So again, it's very, very subtle. 
but there's just just a little bit there and same thing I wasn't smushing the blending foam I was just lightly tapping it on the ink pad and then just very lightly like almost wiping it in a sense across the raised trees so they would just pick up a little bit of that color and because it was white as well and I'm not using a lot of pressure I wasn't like worried about any little tiny smears in that because all that wonderful splatter it just it hides a multitude I think that's why I love it so much you know if, if things aren't working add some splatter <laughs> anywho after I did all that I cut down some pre-printed sentiments these are the reverse holiday sentiment pack I think that's what it is reverse happy holidays I'll, again I'll have a link these ones you can foil them I've shown that in other videos I kept these ones simple I just cut them down and then I took my black marker and just ran that along the edges because these are printed onto white cardstock so I want to cover up that exposed white edge after trimming them down it just it makes them look a little bit more finished and then another thing I did was I adhered a piece of a heavyweight white cardstock that I had trimmed down to just slightly smaller than these embossed card fronts this just gives it a little bit of extra um, strength the teensiest bit of dimension because I'm only adding the one layer I'm not adding several and I'm not adding foam tape but this just kind of helps also hold everything down because these card fronts like they've been sprayed with water they've been run through with an embossing folder they've been splattered they've been trimmed all these things so this just kind of helps smooth them out without actually smoothing them out because you can't um, like run these through your die cut machine like other warped cardstock because then you would flatten all of that fabulous dry embossing so I just adhered these pieces of heavyweight white cardstock with my craft tacky glue to the backs of them and then I set them under something um, a, a couple packs of cardstock actually not too heavy because I don't want to flatten the embossing but just enough to hold everything in place for a few minutes just to let that glue dry and it just gives those card fronts that's just that little extra bit of like stability I guess in a sense so while those were drying I have my card bases themselves which is more heavyweight white cardstock and these are all a2 size cards so I have it lined up in my misty and this I've shown in multiple videos um, how I like to stamp with the distress oxide inks so I'm directly inking this sentiment with the uh, speckled egg and the chip sapphire oxide inks and then I'm using my blending foams which again I do not wash my blending foams especially for my distress oxides but any of my blending foams I don't wash them you let them get saturated with the inks it just it makes a huge difference and after inking up a stamp with the inks I use the blending foams for those same inks and I just pounce it lightly all over the area where I've already inked it up and one with these it creates an, a smoother transition but it also um, helps the ink lay smoother on the stamp so you get a better impression so I showed that in one of the other videos in this series with a lar that large falling snow slimline stamp and how it just gave way better coverage so you can check that out if you've missed that video but I did this over and over again with um, a sentiment from the good cheer stamp set and just kept repeating the process till I had all four of the insides of these cards stamped with that stamp and those two inks and then I wanted to bring in that rustic wilderness because it's a gorgeous color and just to kind of tie everything together so I have another sentiment from that same set and now I've lined that up and I'm just inking this up directly with that rustic wilderness ink and stamping it a couple times so that um, all the insides of the cards are going to have a complete sentiment in those three different colors so I'll say wishing you peace love and joy now and throughout the coming year so again repeat that process four times till all four card bases are stamped with that sentiment and now all I have to do is start to assemble everything so I'm going to adhere that big Merry Christmas sentiment to the card front again with just the craft tacky glue um, I'm not really squeezing the glue tube very much I just kind of run it along and it just kind of does little little thin lines little thin dots not a whole lot of glue because I don't want it oozing out everywhere so I applied that and then after the sentiments in place I just stack some um, acrylic blocks on top of it just to hold everything down let that adhere and then the little sentiment strip I'm adhering with um, just little bits of um, foam tape here just little 
foam squares, cutting a couple down just to kind of balance the parts that aren't right over the letters and then the rest I'm just adhering with the craft tacky glue. So once I've got the little bits of foam squares on there, I'm going to adhere that into place. And then all of these are going to get adhered to their card bases again with the craft tacky glue. So, and same thing, I don't, it looks, especially when I was adhering that white card, it's like layer to the embossed layers. It looks like I'm using a lot of glue, but again, I'm not squeezing the tube, like very thin amounts, especially with craft tacky glue. You don't need very much. Like, I love this glue because it's cheap. <laughs> it's cheap and I don't need much. And these cards are never going to fall apart. That's the only crappy thing is if you try to move something after the glue is dried, you are going to tear the cardstock. So anywho. After I applied my card fronts, as always, you could leave it here, but I need to add a, just a little bit more bling. So I pulled out my absolute favorite, my Studio Caudia Snow Crystals and my Studio Caudia Iridescent Ice Flakes. And just kind of sprinkled them throughout the card. Not tons, but you know, just a few here and there. And once I was kind of happy with the placement, I adhered those into place with my uh, Craft Tacky Glue. And then just repeated that for all the cards till they got their little bit of bling and crystals. And then once that was complete, these cards are finished. So kind of tilt them in the light so you can kind of see like that shimmer splatter for the snow. You got the white splatter and then the bling. Yeah, love it. So as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I'll have the pictures in the blog post. I'll have picture links to everything I used. Um, I'll have the supply list. Again, I'll list and link to everything I use. So you can check that out in the description box below the video. And again, thank you all so much for watching, for subscribing, thumbs upping, commenting. I very much appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.